Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna cover a multitude of things. We're gonna be going over the products that I think that you should buy during the Sephora VIB sale. I'm also gonna be showing you how I apply each and every product that I am recommending today to my face. I have been wearing this makeup since 10 a.m. this morning. It is now 5, 10 p.m. So she has held up pretty nicely. And again, I did this makeup look using all of the products that I'm about to recommend to you. We're also gonna be going over what is on my wish list? All the things that are in my Sephora cart that I plan to check out day one of the Sephora VIB sale. If you do not know when the sale is, neither do I. I'm gonna go ahead and put up the flyer right here on the screen so that we are all informed as to when the sale starts. Being a Sephora Rouge member, which I am not bragging because it is disgusting how much money I spend at Sephora on a yearly basis, but I have the privilege of shopping the sale first and the first day of the sale for Rouge members is April 1st and then depending upon what level you are at that determines when you can go ahead and enter the sale. I'm very excited for today's video. If you are new here, my name is Fortune. I upload a ton of makeup videos, a ton of beauty content, but I'm also a vlogger and I like to talk about real world problems. You know, I love beauty. I love skincare. I love makeup. For me, it is definitely a form of self-love and helps me get through the day. But I also do talk about topics such as grief. I lost my dad in January. And if you would like to just see like a more realistic part of my life, I do share that on YouTube here because, you know, I think it's important to share the good side, the bad side, just so that you're not, you know, scrolling through social media thinking that everyone is living in this highlight reel because my friends, it is not realistic. So if you would like to be a part of my crazy journey, all the ups and downs, be sure to subscribe and click the bell button next to it. This way you get a notification every time I'm uploading a new video here on my channel. But today we are keeping it happy, we are keeping it light, and we are talking about all of the things that make my heart sing. If you've been with me for a minute, you know I have uploaded so many Sephora videos, so many recommendation videos. So I really sat down at my vanity and I picked the products that if I personally did not have them on hand, I would be buying them in the sale because they hold such a spot in my makeup routine. I wake up, I have a cup of coffee, and I start off with my Peter Thomas Roth Cucumber Face Mask. It is a great mask for just hydrating your skin. I am someone that has combination leaning way more dry skin, especially especially in the cooler months. As we start entering into spring and summer, my skin definitely is a little bit less dry. However, I'm always dry. I always have dry patches. I also really have sensitive, sensitive skin. But I would say that this Peter Thomas Roth mask is the best mask I've ever tried. It's very good for sensitive skin. It is super hydrating. And personally, I love it because it is a great conductor for my new face. I have done so many videos on my new face. I've talked about it so many times that I don't really wanna to touch upon it too much in this video. But if you don't know what it is, it is a microcurrent device that helps to lift and tighten the muscles in your face, which essentially lifts and tightens your face. I use it all the time. This is a product that you instantly see the results. And the more that you use it, the better your results are. I personally use it two to three times a week. It can be a little time consuming. I usually spend about 15 minutes per session on it, but I would definitely recommend getting the Peter Thomas Roth mask as well as the New Face Trinity device. I know that the New Face is expensive, but if you are a Rouge, you will save 20% off and it is really, worth the money. Mike bought it for me about two or three years ago. So it is an investment, definitely, but it's definitely worth the splurge. And if you're thinking about it, now is the time to buy. I also really love the Shiseido eye patches. These are great at really minimizing the fine lines around my eyes. I use these in the morning. I used to use them at night. However, they instantly help to fill in the lines. So I realized that it didn't make sense to be using them and then go to bed because no one is looking at me while I'm sleeping. No one is admiring the fact that my eyes are smooth um, and there is not a single wrinkle, crinkle. So definitely use them in the morning. They're great, super hydrating. I love that they stay in place. So like I can put them on. Again, I time it for 15 minutes. I can go ahead and clean things, scrub things. I can do whatever and they're gonna stay in place. I really like the patchology. I think that's how you say it, patchology. However, they're like a heavy gel. So I do find that they slip and they slide and they kind of like 
go down my face so they don't really stay put. However, the Shiseido ones are kind of like a cloth material and they stay exactly where you put them, which I think is great. I recently shared a tip Tuesday with you guys about how I reuse my eye patches. So I'll put them around my eyes, let them sit there for 15 minutes, and then I redampen them in the serum because have you ever noticed that eye patches, they just like have so much serum inside the packaging that you can just redip them and then I put them around my mouth to help with my smile lines. It's great, reusable. You guys know I love things that are multi-purpose. I love when you can use things more than once before getting rid of them. Shiseido sent this to me. However, they sell it at Sephora and I'm going to definitely repurchase it. It's actually in my basket right now. This is a very expensive serum, but oh my God, guys, when I tell you that it instantly brightens the skin and it's just really good. Again, for those of you who have sensitive skin, all of these products that I'm mentioning today are really good for sensitive skin because my skin reacts like that. Like I put something on my face and it turns bright red. So this is the Shiseido Ultimune Power Infusing Concentrate. It can be a little sticky, so I don't like a sticky serum, but the way that I get around that is that I apply this while my skin is still damp, and if my skin is dry before applying it, I'll just use a facial spray, dampen my skin, and then use this. It looks beautiful under makeup. Like I said, it instantly brightens the skin. It helps with fine lines. It has antioxidants in it. I apply it every morning after cleansing. I have been also applying this at night because it's just so good on my skin. My skin genuinely loves this. It kind of just like sucks it in and it doesn't irritate me. So this has been my morning and nighttime serum. You guys know I love this Marad Hydration Perfecting Day Cream. It is so good. It feels so nice. It plumps the skin. It brightens the skin instantly. It has an SPF of 30 so I can go outside, feel protected from the sun. I put this all over my face, all over my neck, and it looks beautiful, beautiful, beautiful under makeup. Like I said, I have combo leaning dry skin and I really love this one. My husband has oilier skin than I do and he really likes the vitamin C one but guys if you haven't tried these sunscreens from Murad give them a shot they are so beautiful these are like the kind of face creams that you wouldn't even know it had sunscreen in it unless you read the packaging like it's it's very light on the skin I feel like my skin can breathe. It doesn't leave a white cast. It's just, I can't say enough good things about this sunscreen and you're probably sick of hearing me talk about it. Eye cream during the day. I've been using the Charlotte Tilbury Cryo Recovery Eye Serum. Again, it's really light under the makeup. It looks really good under the makeup. It doesn't irritate the skin around my eyes. That's one thing that I definitely have an issue with. Eye creams can definitely leave rashes under my eyes. The skin around your eye is so thin. I get little bumpies all around my eyes if something is is too scented if something if there's just like an ingredient that my skin doesn't agree with but this has never irritated my under eyes it feels so good it has a metal applicator so if you're someone that struggles with puffiness it's really nice because the coolness of this will help to depuff your eyes i don't use the metal applicator i like to put it on my fingers and then gently massage it into my skin in a counterclockwise motion i really focus it on the corners of my eye right here because i am someone that has a lot of fine lines around my eyes because i smile and I don't hate that I have fine lines because I think it just goes to show that I am a happy person most of the time. So this is so good, beautiful under makeup. And I think I wanna try something different, but we'll get to that when we go through what I'm gonna buy at the sale. For foundation, guys, I feel like this is a very controversial foundation and we've talked about this quite a few times here on my channel, but this is Charlotte Tilbury's Beautiful Skin Foundation. I am in the shade for neutral. A lot of people say that this is too heavy on the skin. A lot of people say that if you have texture, it enhances it. If you have like little holes, pores, all that kind of stuff. People don't really like this. However, I love this. I feel like it feels really light on my skin. I feel like it gives a nice natural glow. I never look like too dewy. You know, there's a fine line between dewy and sweaty and I never look sweaty with this foundation. I love that it comes in a pump. I love that it's like this bottle that weighs nothing. Glass bottles look nice, but when I'm traveling with my makeup, I like something that weighs less. So this is just like the perfect packaging for me. And if you're someone that owns this and you don't like it because of all the reasons that I just said, I personally apply it to the back of my hand. I let it sit on my hand for a good five minutes. The longer you let it sit on your hand, the thinner it's going to make the formula of the product. And the thinner a foundation is, the more forgiving it is. The warmth of your skin helps to change texture of this to a really thin, really soft foundation. And then I go ahead and I take the warmed up foundation on the back of my hands and I really work it into my foundation brush. And working it into the brush 
helps to ensure that you're not putting on too much product because what's gonna churn up texture on your face is thick product and too much of it. So that's how I go ahead and make this work. If you own it, try that technique, let it warm up on your hand, work it into the brush before applying it to your face and I guarantee you, you will like this foundation quite a lot more than you already do. Hourglass Concealer. I'm in the shade Cotton. This is the Vanish Airbrush Concealer. I bought the trial size. This is the best concealer I've tried at Sephora in a long time. I would say the last one that I tried that I really, really enjoyed was NARS, the NARS Creamy Concealer. I'm in the shade Madeline. I don't know, guys. I really like this. I think it does a good job. However, I just haven't really fallen head over heels with a concealer in a minute. So if you have any concealer recommendations, leave them down below. But like this is by far the best one that I've tried in a really long time. I don't know if you can see, but I've been noticing that I get a little bit dark under here and I've been testing and trying different mascaras and it just keeps happening. So I'm not sure if it's the concealer, but what I do like about this concealer is that it really doesn't move into my fine lines too bad. It's nice if you have fine lines, give it a shot, but I'm still trying to I'm still, I'm still running an investigation as to why this keeps happening to me. I bought this a couple months ago and I have to say, I'm so happy that I did. Patrick Ta Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo. I bought the shade She Sculpted. It has a contour up here, a cream contour, and I love that it has this little flap over it so that it makes sure that when you're dipping into the powder bronzer, it doesn't float into the cream product. Genius, genius, genius. I love this contour. It is so natural. It goes on and blends like a dream. It's just like foolproof. And if you're someone that's new to contour or you have trouble contouring, I would highly, highly recommend this. And I just think this is great because you contour your face with the cream contour and then you set the contour with your bronzer. Like it's so genius. This bronzer is so, so nice. It doesn't go on patchy. It gives a really nice glow to the face. I absolutely love this. I wish the packaging was like a little bit skinnier. It does take up a lot of room in my makeup bag, but just the fact that it's two in one, I will forgive it, you know, because this takes out less space than a cream contour and a powder bronzer would if I had two of them separately. Do you know what I'm saying? When a makeup product is as beaten and battered and destroyed as this one is, that my friends is how you know she is a ride or die. Tower 28, this is the Beach Please Cream Blush. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Her limbs come off because I love her so freaking much, but this is in the shade Happy Hour. Guys, I have been wearing this makeup one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost eight hours, and you can still see my blush. Granted, I did use another blush on top of this. We're about to get there, but this stays on so beautiful. This is just like a very natural, sun-kissed, youthful look. Like this is like the color of my cheeks, what they look like after I run a mile, which do not ask me the last time that I ran a mile because I literally have no idea. If I were to run a mile, this is what my cheeks would look like. It's so good. There is no formula out there quite like this. Every time I wear this, someone asks me what blush I'm wearing. And every time it's this one, it's literally this one. Yeah, she is a mess, but we love her dearly. So today, I went ahead and I layered this on top of my Tower 28. This is Patrick Ta in the shade She's Seductive. I love this, I think it's so beautiful. This is just like a very like elegant shade. It's just like jaw dropping. And honestly, it's even more beautiful on the skin. I love it. Patrick Ta is just like doing the damn thing right. I wish again, this was a little thinner. That's the only complaint that I have about his packaging. His packaging is just like a little bulky. Like these two things take up quite a lot of space in my makeup routine, in my makeup bag, but you know, they're beautiful. So well worth it. In my opinion, I think that like whatever you try of his, it's just, they're really good. The formulas are just really good. We don't need to spend any time here because you guys know the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. This is the setting powder of my dreams. I've tried the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush one. It, it falls, it falters in comparison to this one. This is a trial size one and it just, it lasts forever and a day. It's so good. She's so freaking good. And like, why fix something if it ain't broke? So that's why I will always go back to this. I will always, always love her. She is a ride or die bitch. Today, I used the Laura Mercier Caviar Stick in the shade Amethyst, but I have so many of them. I have Copper, 
I have strapless, I have amethyst, which again I use today, and then I have cocoa. I would say out of all of them, I I definitely use amethyst and cocoa. Cocoa is just like a dark brown, but these are so good. These are great if you just wanna draw them all over the lid and then smudge them out with a finger. Easy, one, two, three, throw it on the lid, girl that's in a rush kind of makeup look. And if you're someone that has brown eyes like me, amethyst is the way to go. Just like a beautiful purple shade that just makes your brown eyes pop. If you had asked me my thoughts on them like five years ago, I was a little mad about them, but just like the way that they up my makeup game with such little effort, these are great. And if you are a mom on the go, I highly, highly recommend these. Like I said, you could do your makeup, you could put your mascara on and then like drop your kid off. And then in the car, you want to do like a little like, you know, pop of something, just draw this on the lid, smudge it with your index finger. And there you go. You have an eyeshadow on the go. No, no brushes necessary. Just use your finger. It's so freaking good. I am on an eyeliner mission. I'm testing and trying. I want to try out different kind of formulations because the truth is that I'm very bored. I use this all the time and this is the second one of this and she's dwindling down to a little nub. But this is the Charlotte Tilbury. This is her rock and coal. I almost can't read it. Iconic liquid eye pencil. It's not liquid though. It's a coal eyeliner, which I prefer coal eyeliner rather than a liquid eyeliner. But this is in the shade Barbarella Brown. I'm wearing her today. She's just really great to line the eyes with to draw a little cat eye. You can lay her down and then smudge her out with a pencil brush. She gives you a little bit of time to play around with, but then when she dries, she's dried and she's gonna stay put. So I really, really enjoy these. Barbarella Brown is by far my favorite shade. And then I also really like Pillow Talk. Again, if you have brown eyes, it kind of leans a purpley shade. The only thing about them though, is that you have to sharpen them a lot. Charlotte Tilbury, any of her lip liners or eyeliners, any kind of liner pencil, they are super, super creamy. And creamy is nice because you can one, two, three be done. You know, it lays the pigmentation on quickly, smoothly, they're very pigmented. But the problem with any kind of creamy pencil like this is that the point goes very quick because they are so, so creamy. So when I'm doing a wing, I literally will do one eye and then I have to sharpen it before doing the other eye just to get that precision wing. Please note that I do really love this palette that I'm about to show you. However, the only reason why I'm picking this one is because the NARS palettes that I love are no longer sold at Sephora because every time NARS comes out with a freaking eyeshadow palette, it is always limited edition. I will tell you my favorite eyeshadow palettes after I show you this one, um, just so that we're all on the same page. However, you can't buy them anymore because they are discontinued. So what you can buy at Sephora is Huda's new nude eyeshadow palette. I bought this for my wedding. There's a lot of purples in here and everything that you think isn't purple kind of leans a little purple. So like this shade Secret right here, which looks brown, it kind of leans a little mauve. So it's beautiful again, if you have brown eyes. However, I myself, I'm not always in the mood to have a purple eye. So like today, I didn't want to wear a purple eyeshadow, but I wanted to rock this eyeshadow palette because I knew that I would be mentioning it when sitting down with you guys right here, right now. So I used the shade Play because I knew that I was going to be wearing a bright top like this and I thought peach would look really nice with this color. So I just took Play and I threw that in the crease of my eye and I put a little bit underneath the lower lash line. I could have also used this shade to highlight the inner corner and the brow bone, which is something Thing that I do often. This is in the shade Bare, but I didn't do it today. I really like the shimmers, the glitters. I've used this so many times. I don't feel like swatching it because it's going to get everywhere all over me. And I had an incident this weekend where I spilled a ton of foundation on my black dress that I wear to get ready. And I'm very upset about it because I can't get the damn foundation out of my dress. If you are someone that loves glitter, this glitter is great. I just wish this palette was a little bit more versatile because I think if you can get your hands on a NARS eyeshadow that you like from Sephora, you should buy it during the sale because in my personal opinion, NARS does eyeshadow right. Just the fact that they make them limited edition is really unright. Skin Deep, this came out quite a few years ago. I really like an eyeshadow palette with browns, a dark brown, a more neutral brown, contour brown, like I love a brown. I love a brown. I love a golden kind of shimmer shade, a champagne-y kind of shimmer shade. Like this is just all right to me. What I don't like about Huda is that she doesn't have a dark enough brown. 
Do you see what I'm saying here? Like there's no super dark espresso brown in this one, but there's all the right browns in this one. That's just my personal opinion. If your girl was to come out with an eyeshadow palette, I would have a whole damn line of browns going from a light brown to a deep dark brown. I just think that, like everyone needs a dark brown. So I just feel like this is a beautiful palette, but it's a little incomplete. This is probably the seventh damn tube that I've gone through of this. This is my favorite mascara. I have more in my Ikea drawer back here. It's so good. I can't get enough of it. I love the wand. I love that it's curled. I like a wand that has those like plastic bristles. Now let's, let's make sure we're on the same page here. When I buy a mascara, I want the mascara to elongate my lashes, separate my lashes, and give them a wispy effect. I don't look for like the false lash kind of mascara. I look for length more than I look for volume. I mean, granted, I like, I like both, but anything that's gonna leave my lashes looking chunky monkey and just like short and like, you know like when someone just has like really dark lashes and it just, it looks like really clumpy. I personally don't like that. So if you're someone that likes a longer wispy lash, then you will love this. This I've had for a lifetime and I should probably get rid of it, but this bad boy is so expensive, but it's like the never ending powder. This is the Hourglass Ambient. It's just like the palette. I literally take a brush and I run it through all three of the powders. And then I put that all over my face. This is the last step, like the perfect last step in anyone's makeup makeup routine. If your makeup looks a little funky, if it looks like you just didn't blend it quite enough, this puts like a light cast, a veil, a veil over your face and just makes everything blend nicer. It makes your skin look dewy, but you're not adding like a dampness to your skin. So you're not going to look sweaty. It gives like a glow from within kind of look. It just, it blurs the skin, it blurs the pores, it blurs the fine lines. It literally is like putting an Instagram filter on your face in real life. This is worth the hype. It is worth the money. You will get your return on investment for this because it lasts a lifetime. Like I bought this a really, really long time ago. I'm almost like embarrassed to say how long ago I bought this because it says that it only lasts for 12 months. Um, so don't follow my lead, but also I'm fine. I bought this when I lived in my apartment and I've lived with my husband for a good four years now. So this is like five or six years old. Um, and again, I will probably have her for another five or six years. Um, highly recommend, beautiful, beautiful product. Iconic Nude from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the lip liner. It is a beautiful shade. You guys have seen me use it so many times. I'm going to repurchase it because it is going to be a thimble very, very soon. That is how often I use her. I don't love Charlotte's formula. I know that sounds very counterintuitive because I'm telling you that these are like my top of the top, best of the best. These are the things that I would recommend. This color is unlike any other color. However, like I said before, it doesn't keep a point very long. I like a stiffer kind of like wooden pencil when it comes to lip liner because if you're someone that likes to accentuate the cupid's bow in your lip, as you can see today, it's kind of rounded out, but that's just because this cream product, you can't like precisely line your lips with this because one, like I said, because it's so creamy, the tip kind of rounds out and it becomes more of like a mound rather than a tip. Do you know what I'm saying? And also like cream products tend to bleed a little bit. So this will bleed and it gets to the point where I'm over lining my lips and then I make a mistake and I have to just like round it out. So that is what I did today. However, this shade is unlike any other shade I have ever freaking used. So for that reason alone, I highly recommend. This goes with any and every lipstick you could possibly think of. It does weird things to my soul. I bought this lipstick a while ago. And the first time that I tried it, I was like, okay, this is a lipstick that can go just in the center of my lips because see, it has that like very bright peachy, almost like, concealer on my lips vibe. However, when paired with this lip liner, it is just like pure, it is pure magic. Like my lips could not look huger. This is a combo for the decade, my friends. I've said it on my Instagram, I'm saying it again. Beautiful. I love her lip collagen baths. My favorite shade is definitely Refresh Rose. However, I also own Pillow Talk. These are so freaking beautiful. I'm gonna buy one. I got. I actually forgot to put it in my bag. My bag is like at 20 items right now. It's close to $1,200. We're gonna get to it, but I need to chill. Um, but these are so good. These are plumping. 
they're beautiful. I'm wearing it today. It does that thing where it pumps your lips. It fills in the fine lines. It feels really nice. It doesn't ever get like sticky. This is so comfortable. It does all the right things. I also wanted to mention this lipstick because it is so beautiful. I actually included it in my get ready with me using all my Sephora recommendations. I really recommend this. This shade is unreal. I love it. This is the Laura Mercier Brune Pal. I don't know how you say that, but it's number 50. It is so, so pretty, honestly. Yeah, let's just, mm. it's like light, but it's more pink and less peachy than the Charlotte Tilbury one. And I love that it's a magnetic. It's so pretty. I really like this, very comfortable super comfortable on the lips. Let's talk about all the things that are on my wish list. I wanna give the Laneige sleeping mask another try. Honestly, I owned it and I didn't love it and it went bad so I had to throw it out and I had only gone through like half of it but Primera stopped making their Alpine Berry lip mask. Like I can't find it anywhere. I think it's like on eBay but I'm not paying $65 for a lip mask. So I wanna try that one. And honestly, the sweet candy one sounded fun. I had the original one, which is original. So I wanted to try the sweet candy. It just looks like it has a hint of like a purpley shade. So I definitely want to try that. I also really want to try Charlotte Tilbury's Matte Beauty Blush Wands. All the shades look freaking beautiful. The deepest shade, I know it's not going to look as beautiful as it does on the women in this photo who are of darker complexion than I am. Like, oh my god, this looks so good on her. I just, it looks so good. But it's not gonna look that good on me. I definitely need a lighter shade. So I'm gonna go with Pink Pop, which is the lightest. I just, I can't get over her skin in this photo. Oh my God, the complexion to die. Don't love this packaging. I had the Hollywood Contour Wand from Charlotte Tilbury, which is the same exact packaging and it makes a mess. So I can only imagine that this is gonna make a mess everywhere, but I've seen so many people try it on, on YouTube, on TikTok, and it just looks so stunning that I can't help myself. I have to try it. I had mentioned to you that I'm running out of my cryo recovery eye cream. So I wanna go back to the Ule Henriksen Banana Bright Vitamin C Under Eye Moisturizer. You know what I'm saying? Eye cream, yeah. I wanna try this again. I've seen a lot of people use it again on social media and it really brightens the heck out of their under eyes. And I'm just like craving that juicy brightness because I feel like the brighter my under eye is, the less concealer I have to use and the less chance of this transferring of whatever this is, is gonna happen. I also wanna try this Foreo UFO2. I was reading about it and it says a bunch of crazy things. You can use it over your favorite sheet mask with hydrating serums to increase their efficiency, prep the skin before applying a self tanner to ensure a smooth and hydrated finish to the skin, soothe a headache because it has pulsations in it. That sounds lovely. It has cryotherapy and thermotherapy that you can use on sore muscles. It can help soothe the sunburn. Like it just, this sounds like it does so much that I need to get my hands on it. It is pricey. It is $299, um, but I use my new face a lot and I feel like I've really proven to myself that I will use the facial devices on a daily basis. So I will definitely get my return on investment. Stay tuned if you want a tutorial, a rundown. I plan on buying it, let your girl know. I am craving my Sol De Janeiro Boom Boom Cream. It's been a minute since I owned it. I honestly stopped buying it because I wanted to try other things and like nothing has made my tushy as smooth as the Boom Boom Cream has made it. So I'm definitely gonna repurchase it during the sale. And when I tell you that my booty needs to look great this summer because I'm gonna be doing a lot of booty bumping, Hot Girl Summer is definitely on the way. Um, I want my tushy to look as good as I want it to look. And so I definitely need the Boom Boom Cream. I also really wanna try and make by Mario. I haven't tried a damn thing from his line. Now, I don't know, the Master Matte's eyeshadow palette is just calling to me. I feel like this is a great palette to just take with me when I'm traveling because this is just like a palette of colors that I would create myself. When I said before, array of browns, like light brown, dark brown, black, creamier brown, a yellowy brown, a yellowy, a yellowery. I don't know how to say that. A more yellow brown, okay? You know what I'm saying. Tower 28. Okay, I love the blush. I'm dying to try the bronzer. The shade that I chose is Getty because I feel like Getty is the best shade for me. Currently don't have a cream bronzer in my collection. All of them went bad. I tossed them and I need it. So I'm gonna go ahead 
and replace my Yensa that I had to get rid of because it was just like very decrepit. I'm gonna replace that with Tower 28 and I will let you know my thoughts. I told you this is so amazing and it is so amazing, but I wasn't using this at night. I was only using this in the morning and I started using my La Mer treatment lotion as a serum at night. I don't know what it is. I tried that one. I tried another serum and they were all just like really irritating my skin. This is great on sensitive skin, but I really just miss my Kiehl's Midnight Recovery Concentrate Face Oil. You guys know, I had the jumbo one, the huge one. It is really expensive, but it fills in the fine lines. It calms down my skin, especially during that time of the month when my skin is just angry like my soul. I need something that's gonna calm it down. And I gotta be honest, this is very expensive too. And I'm going through this like water because I'm using this day and night. So I want to re-enter Kiehl's Midnight Recovery Concentrate into my nighttime routine so that I can use two different serums and not go through a $140 bottle in the matter of seconds. I don't need this, I really just want it. The Dior Addict Lip Glow in 01 Pink. It just looks really nice. And I'm on a mission to find like hydrating lip products that don't dry out my lips because everything that I try dries them out um, and I just end up picking my lips. I struggle with anxiety on the regular and a part of my anxiety, this nervous thing that I do is I chew the shit out of my lips. Um, and I feel like I wouldn't chew them as much if the lip products that I were using weren't drying them out as much because I get like that skin on my lips and then I feel it and I have to just like gnaw it off and then I have a gaping hole in my lip. Anyone else? Anyone else? I hope not. Super Goop Glow Setting 100% Mineral Powder with SPF 35. I'm gonna try it. We're gonna try it together. We'll do like a wear test, a whole shebang, but I'm gonna buy it. And it's $36, which is a lot of money, but you guys know me. I try to protect myself from the sun. I have some dark spots that are forming and I just, I don't want them to get worse. I don't want new ones to appear as I get older. So SPF, very important. And when I'm wearing a full face of makeup, you still need to reapply. And it's hard to reapply over top of makeup. I can't like smear this all over my face because it'll ruin my makeup. Do you get what I'm saying? Another sunscreen thing, I wanna try Say, their Slip Tint Dewy Tinted Moisturizer SPF 35. We talked about this today. I showed you what it looks like on the skin, but it doesn't have SPF in it. And I really love my CC Plus cream that has SPF 30. So I want to go ahead and try the Say SPF 35 sunscreen. Maybe we'll do a wear test video on it. That could be fun. I haven't done one of those in a hot minute and I used to love a wear test day. I would like go to my parents to like visit and my sister would be there and she'd be like, are you doing a wear test? Because I just, I love to do them so much and I love to interview her in my videos and ask her what she thinks of my makeup. Same with Mike. I just, I miss doing that. So we should bring that back. And last but not least, I am dying to try this. It kills Midnight Recovery Omega Rich Cloud Cream. I feel like if I love the concentrate so much, I will love the cloud cream so much. I currently finished my Sobel Skin RX. They're by hyaluronic face cream. I really liked it, but I didn't love it enough to repurchase it. And I'm just like curious. So that is what is on my wish list. Let me know down below in the comment section, what are some of your favorite things that you've owned from Sephora? What is it you plan on buying during the sale? I would love to hear. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I had a wonderful time as always, and I really hope to see you in my next one. Bye guys. Mwah.